Just in case you're wondering, in case somebody slipped in, we have a high attendance today of 44. So anyway. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. How are y'all doing this morning? It is good to see you. Good to be back with you and everything. And good to see everybody. Let's take our hymnal or just let's stand as we sing. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. And then we're going to sing worthy, worthy, you are worthy. Let's sing. Ready? Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banner, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banners, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Worthy, you are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy. Worthy, you are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. Holy, you are holy. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are holy. Holy, you are holy. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of cross my shame rising again I bless your name you are my all in all when I fall down you pick me up when I am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all Jesus Lamb of God Worthy is your 
children said, Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. I was looking through Brother James's notes and things that have been going on through the week and all. So I came up with a, I found a song I had not done in a very long time and um, pulled it out and I thought, hey, you know, this is, this is really going to go with what he is going to preach on this morning. It's entitled, Somebody Touch the Lord. Listen to the words. Don't listen to half song, but listen to the words and I pray you receive a blessing. feeling down I'm so glad somebody prayed so I can sing it now somebody got another prayer through somebody touched the Lord somebody just touched heaven for another need once more somebody prayed until the spirit came somebody called on Jesus name Somebody knocked upon heaven's door. Somebody touched the Lord. Now when I needed healing and felt too low to pray, somebody interceded and soon my healing came. Now help me, Lord, to pray for those who stand in need of prayer. And let it be said, just once more, somebody touched the Lord. Somebody got another prayer through. Somebody touched the Lord. Somebody just touched heaven for another need once more. Somebody prayed until the Spirit came. Somebody called on Jesus' name. Somebody knocked upon heaven's door. Somebody touched the Lord. Somebody got another prayer through. Somebody touched the Lord. Somebody just touched heaven for another need once more. Somebody prayed until the Spirit came. Somebody called on Jesus' name. I'm so glad somebody prayed so I can touch the Lord. I'm so glad that somebody prayed. Somebody touched the Lord. Amen. It's good, Oh, what a bit of goody. I was telling Brother Kenny that, uh, he's telling me about that he was going to sing an old hymn today, and I said, well, that's good. I like them old hymns. And so we, we enjoyed that, Brother Kenny. Uh, good to see you here this morning. And uh, we got a record attendance so far during this downturn that we've been in, and we're thrilled that you're here today. It's good to have Gwen back. She's been in Huntsville, had surgery, and... God done uh, raised her up, and prayers have been answered, so she's back with us today, and, and we're, we're glad of that. Gwen's good to have you back. And so take your Bible this morning and turn to the fourth chapter of the book of Nehemiah. We've been working on the wall, 
And so we hadn't got it built yet, so we're still involved in looking at it from that direction. And speaking this morning on dealing with discouragement. Dealing with discouragement. Nehemiah chapter 4. Find your place to stand and honor God's word this morning. Don't want you to get too comfortable. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 4, begin reading in verse 1. I'll read down through verse 6. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Now here's Nehemiah's prayer. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity. Let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, a strong praying, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders." Verse 6, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together on the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. You may be seated. Dealing with discouragement. When God's people rise up and say, let us build, and we've seen that in the second chapter of this book of Nehemiah in verse 18. Then the devil will rise up and say, let's battle. And so that's always going to happen when God's people have a mind to work. And they say, let's rise up and let's build. Then the devil's going to say, that, well, let's, let's battle. The role of the devil is to be a discourager. I want you to know that. Discouragement comes from him. The Bible says in Corinthians second chapter, chapter 1, that God is the great encourager. He is the one that encourages us, and I'm thankful that he is. But the devil is the great discourager. And in his toolbox, one of his prized tools that he has is the tool of discouragement because it accomplishes so much to get the end result that he's looking for, and that is to discourage God's people. And he's about his job. Paul writes about this in 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 11, he says, But be, be you warned about the devices of the devil. He's got his devices. Then Ephesians chapter 6, also Paul writing, says in verse 11, We are, we are warned about the devices of the devil. he got his devices. Then 1 Timothy 3 and 7 says, We're told about the snares of the devil. So the devil has various methods that he uses to uh, discourage God's people. He got his devices. He got his traps. He got his snares. And he's got his mechanisms, if you will, to bring discouragement to the hearts and the lives of God's people. And I don't care who you are. Uh, somewhere along the way, sooner or later, you're going to get down. You're going to experience uh, some discouragement. S uh, sometimes the uh, <clears throat> the opposition and difficulties will come, it seems like, just in waves. And just waves will roll over your soul that way. And it'll come to you. I don't care who you are. I don't care what position in life that you have. Those times of discouragement just can come just waves rolling over your soul. And sometimes they seem like they come in bunches, if you will. But we're talking about discouragement this morning. The title of the message is Dealing with Discouragement. And I might add something to it, how to get up when you're down. But that's what we're looking at this morning. First of all, the curse of discouragement, looking back to the scripture says in verse 1, but it came to pass. Now, things were going well. Things were going smooth. The people were getting along. They were working together. 
They were making progress. And so uh, that was coming to pass and is moving well. And that's always good when that happens. But it doesn't take long in your Christian life uh, to understand that Christian life is not a playground. It's a battleground. And opposition is going to come against you. We're involved in spiritual warfare. And so you, well, the Bible warns us about that. And we are to put on the whole armor of God that we can withstand in the evil day, if you will. And so God gives us the equipment. But the Christian life is not a playground. It's a battleground. And there's fights to be fought. And there's battles to be won in the uh, Christian life. And so we need to understand that. So in verse 1 says, When Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And so what you have here is discouragement and ridicule of the opposition that's here. Why did he have opposition, Nehemiah, when he'd come to uh, build those walls that had been torn down for 120 years, had laid there in waste, and now all of a sudden he comes to town to build them walls, and now all of a sudden there's opposition to what he wants to do that's there. And so uh, more damage can be done by discouragement than almost any other thing. And so verse 10 says, And Judah said, We are not able to build this wall. Who is Judah? They are the chief tribe, eh? the tribe that Jesus come from. They were the cream of the crop, if you will. And to get it where we can understand it, that will be the deacons and the Sunday school teachers in your church. That would be who Judah would be. And Judah said they've been listening to the wrong people. He'd been, been listening to the wrong people. And they said it can't be done. We can't do it. And so that was what the tribe of Judah, what they were saying. And so... Uh, they are saying this. Well, as we think about this, the cause of discouragement, first of all, the enemy was ridiculing. They were involved in psychological warfare. Sam Ballot starting a, a propaganda camp, campaign. His intention is to hinder the work of God. Now, you need to understand that. Where are they coming from? That is the purpose. That's the plan. If the hinder in the building of this wall, they don't want to see it done. And they'll use ridicule, they'll use mockery, and they'll use whatever they can use in order that that wall will not come up and it won't be completed. And so we need to see that. So propaganda is going on. When David, remember David, when he went out against Goliath, and old Goliath, you know, mocked and made fun of him and laughed and everything, said, just a young strap of a boy, you send him out here. And, and to know, when the, the, everybody else wouldn't come and David volunteered to go, and David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And I'm telling you, God gave a great victory that day, but Goliath and the army was ridiculing David. But I'm telling you, God won a great victory that day through Young David. So we see, first of all, we see the enemy and we see there is ridiculing. So uh, Christians got to have some tough skin. Because along with being a Christian and being on the battlefield, there's going to be on the part of the world, they're going to ridicule you for your stand and your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That just comes with the territory. And so if you uh, can't withstand ridicule and little mockery and whatnot, then you're not going to amount to a whole lot in your walk with God. And so this is what's happening, what Nehemiah is coming up against. So we see uh, ridicule. We see the enemy conspiring in verse 3. The Bible says, Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him and said, Now they're gaining momentum. It started out with one guy, Sin Battle. Now they got two. Later on, you're going to have three and then some more. I call them the three devil's musketeers. That's there. And then so uh, Tobiah, he's a Me Too movement. And whatever Sin Ballot says, then Tobiah's over here in the corner and he said, I'm saying it too. And so they got him involved in this situation as well. And so it's a conspiracy. The enemy is conspiring. And they're getting the numbers. They're getting more people involved to come against what God wants to do. 
And so there's plenty of people that will volunteer. The devil's got plenty that will join up when they're going against the work of God and what God wants to do. Verse 7 says that when Sanballat and Tobiah the Arabians that were in the south of, Ju of Jerusalem and the Ammonites to the east, as that were to the west, verse 2 says, and the Samaritans were to the north. Now what you got here is God's people are surrounded I mean, the enemy is in the north, in the south, in the east, and in the west. The only place it's not guarded is up here. <laughs> and that's up to heaven, amen? They can't uh, eliminate the prayers of God's people, and so they're going to be bombarded heaven, and those prayers are going to be, be going up. And so the devil has gone from mockery to military. That's what he's done. He's using military means now, I got you surrounded. Now, I'm making fun of you. You build that wall, and I'm telling you, a fox could go across it, and the stones would fall. But in, but in, in uh, a light of that, we got you surrounded. I mean, there's opposition on every side you can turn, and we got you surrounded. And so this is what that Nehemiah is up against. Verse 9 says, this is Nehemiah's response to the ridicule and the mockery. He says in verse 9, nevertheless... We made our prayers unto God. That's what you've got to do when you're surrounded. That's what you've got to do when you're ridiculed and you're made light of and you are mocked before God is you're going to have to give that thing to God. And that's what Nehemiah did. And so he just, in, he says there in, uh, in that passage of verse 9, Nevertheless, we made our prayers unto our God. And then he says this, And set a watch against them, Day and night. What does the Bible say? The Bible says to watch and to pray. That's what they're doing. See, when you get in trouble, when you get surrounded by problems and difficulties and, and, and trouble, then you need to care it to God. Care it to Him in prayer. And you need to do that. Then you need to have your eye on the enemy. Don't take your eye off the enemy. Know who your enemies are. Do your homework, if you will. And you know where they are and what they're about and what they're doing. But in, in, in light of that, also, you keep in touch with headquarters. The commander in chief, if you will. And that's God. And that's what Nehemiah is doing. He's turned this situation over to God in prayer. And so he's praying. Nehemiah said, pray, talk to God. Keep your eye on the enemy. Watch, know where the enemy is and what the enemy is doing. So the curse of discouragement. Secondly... The cause of discouragement. Why does discouragement come? Look at verse 10 and 11. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of the burdens is decayed. There's much rubbish, so that we're not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, They shall not know. Neither see till we come in the midst among them and slay them. And let's get, look at this. And cause the work to cease. That's the purpose. Of causing the work to cease. Now, I want to mention three things about the cause of discouragement. Well, first of all, they were worn out. Verse 10 says, the strength of the bearers of the burdens is decayed. They got tired in the work that they were doing. Verse 6 says, tells us, the wall was halfway built. That's always a discouraging time. I mean, when you sit out on a project and you start and you got plenty of volunteers and everybody's on the fire and, man, they're just moving and they're ready to go. But along the way, fatigue begins to set in. Vince Lombardi said fatigue will make cowards out of all of us. And so this is what you have here. You have people busy in their, in their place and they're working, but they're getting worn out as they begin to work. Verse 6 says, uh, in, in this text tells us that wall was halfway. Buy your new vehicle. Boy, that thing is so pretty and shiny and everything. But along the way, by halfway point of getting that thing paid for. <laughs> and it don't look as shiny and pretty as it did in that showroom floor. Or when you first got in there and you smelled that fresh, fresh new car smell and whatnot. And, and now it don't smell so good. And then payments are coming regular and whatnot. So about halfway along the way, 
then fatigue begins to set in on you that's there. You guys have a project around the house and you, you go strong until you get about half finished and somewhere a long way, about half away, something happens that you don't complete the job. That's because it's going to take some sacrifice and dedication to complete what you started. So this is where they are. They're at the halfway point of completion of finishing the job that they started out to do. And so, uh, listen, uh, your body and soul are so close together, the tendency is to catch one another's diseases. When you get tired physically, it's going to affect you spiritually. It's going to affect your soul. Remember Elijah, that great prophet of God in the Old Testament? How he confronted the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, the contest that was there, and, and called down fire from heaven and consumed the sacrifice that was there. Great victory was won that day. But the devil ain't going to leave you alone because you win one battle. And I'm telling you, when that thing was over with Jezebel, that wicked woman got behind him and got after him. He was running for his life. And he got in the cave and he began to pray. It wasn't a prayer of praise. He said, God, uh, they, they kill all those that serve in you, and now they're after me, and they're going to get me. Well, he didn't, wasn't ready to die. He'd have stayed. Jezebel would have fixed him up. But he was running. You know what God did? God gave him some rest and some sleep and gave him some angel food. And when he consumed that angel food, he was up and going and ready to complete the task that God had for him. I'm saying this. Your physical condition will affect your spiritual condition. And they catch one another's diseases. And so if we get down physically, it's going to affect us spiritually. Because our physical being and our spiritual being are so closely related together. One fellow said, I have so much to do today, I simply must go to bed. <laughs> he got tired thinking about it. I guess I kind of kin to him, I guess. Well, verse 10 said, there's so much rubbish. Now, wait a minute. Have we heard that statement before? Now, this is Judas speaking. This is the cream of the crop. And they said there in verse 10, there's so much rubbish. Sanballat said that. Look at verse 2. Who's Sanballat? He's the opposition. He's the enemy. What did we say? There was a propaganda campaign that was going on. And the opposition was spreading it. Little fake news, it's there. And they were spreading it. And long as you say something enough times and repeat it enough times, somebody is going to believe what you're saying. And this is what you have here. And the Bible says uh, in verse 2 that the Stones out of the heaps of rubbish and Sam Baddock was saying that. And so propaganda has worked. And said enough time, sooner or later somebody will believe it. Judah, the best that God had, started believing what the devil had told them. Devil will deceive you. And if you're not careful, he gets you believing his lies that he's out there. Don't believe everything you hear and half you see that's there. And just bring it in line with the Word of God. What does God's Word have to say about it? Verse 12 says, And it came to pass that when the Jews, now listen to this, which dwelt by them. Now we're talking about the cause of discouragement. They were listening to the wrong people. And they were getting discouraged. That's what's going to happen to you if you listen to the discouraging crowd and whatnot and, and listen to what they're saying. It's going to rub off on you. And that's what's happening here. And so he says in that passage of Scripture, the Jews which dwelt by them. In other words, they were living too close by the wrong people. And pretty soon, if you're living close by the wrong people and listening to the wrong people enough of their conversations and whatnot, you know what's going to happen? It's going to rub off on you what they're saying and how they're living and what that they are doing. If you compromise with the devil and run with the devil's crowd, listen to the lies and propaganda of the devil, you'll always have a discouraging word. Always be able to put a little, little cloud on somebody's sunshine, a little rain on somebody's uh, parade, if you will, that's there. 
And so they were worn out. Be careful when you get worn out. Because it will have an effect upon you. And we're talking about this morning dealing with discouragement. You'll be a good candidate for discouragement when you're worn out physically. Secondly, they were weighted down. Not only were they worn out, they were weighted down. Verse 10 says, there was so much rubbish. They saw all that trash and they said, we'll never get it done. I mean, there's too much to do. We'll never finish this project. We'll never uh, get it done. But they did get it done. And they got done in record time. They got it done in 52 days. This is a miracle. The Bible is a miracle in itself. But this is a miracle building project led by God's man Nehemiah. And they brought these walls up in 52 days. And for 120 years, that wall had been laying on the ground. And people just walked by and never paid any attention to it. Until Nehemiah come by and come to town. And he said, we're going to build this wall. And so they looked at it and they said, there's too much rubbish. There's rubbish everywhere. Well, in Matthew 6, 30, 34, Jesus said, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Well, what is he saying? Somebody said, life is hard by the yard, but a sense by the inch. In other words, don't try to eat the whole thing <laughs> in one bite. Just take a, a nibble, if you will. And nibble away at that thing. And the next thing you know, you'll have that thing fixed. But sometimes, if you're looking at the whole scope of things and bring it in, it'll look and seem that you'll not be able to complete it and be able to do it. And so, but if you go over into tomorrow and bring it in today, what's going to happen? You're going to get weighted down. Not only are you going to get worn out, but you're going to get weighted down. Because all that you see that needs to be done. And let me say this. God will give you enough time each day to do what he wants you to do in that day's time and in that schedule. Where we get in trouble is when we go over into tomorrow and the next day and bring it into today. And then we get loaded down. And that's when the problems come. So these people here. Now the, the cause of their discouragement is because they're worn out. And because of they are weighted down. And so before you can build, you have to remove the trash. Verse 10 says, there's so much rubbish. Now we're, uh, we're not able to build. The hardest part, not laying the brick. Now, uh, I've helped a little in brick work and make, mix the mud and, and tote the bricks and whatnot. I, I don't lay them. I don't do that. It'd be bad if you see me laying something. But... Uh, but uh, they, it's harder to clear the space and get the foundation for the work to be done. And so this, there's much rubbish. You've got to get down to, the, to the, uh, uh, get down to the foundation, if you will. And what I'm getting at is get down to the foundation of the Word of God. Get down there. You know, there's a lot of rubbish that you've got to deal with. Now, I like positive things, and I know you like positive things, but before you can see the positive happen, you've got to get down to the foundation. And there's some rubbish that's got to be taken out of the way before the building process can take place. Sometimes there's organizational rubbish. Now, organization is wonderful. And your body is organized. I've said that. And our churches are to be organized. But sometimes... There's organizational rubbish, if you will, that needs to be cleared out of the way. Sometimes there's traditional rubbish that needs to be cleared out of the way before you can get down to the foundation and begin to build on what thus saith the Lord God. And so they were weighted down and they were worn out. But number three, they were wrought up. Look in verse 11 of this fourth chapter. In verse 12, and our adversary said, they shall not know neither see till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, not one time, they said unto us ten times from all places, whence you shall return unto us, they will be upon you. They said, we're going to get you. That's my terminology. That's what they were saying. They said it one time. They said it ten times. 
We're going to get you. We come in against you, and there's no safe place that you can be, and we're going to reap havoc when we come, and we're coming. And that's what they uh, were saying. And so they were, were wrought up about this situation. I mean, they were thinking about what's being said, and it's got into their head and into their minds and, and whatnot that's there. One man asked the preacher, said, how many members do you have? He said, well, uh, how many active members do you have? He said, well, all my members are active. Some are building and some are tearing down, but all of them are active. They're involved. And so here you have some active, Nehemiah, and he is that God's give him the lead to build. Then you got Sambal and his bunch. They're tearing down. That's that. Want to tear down. And so uh, here's the cause of their discouragement. They're worn out. They were weighted down, and they were wrought up. Moving along, we looked at the curse of discouragement. We looked exactly at the cause of discouragement. Now the cure, we will look at that. Notice the steps that Nehemiah took to re-encourage those who had been discouraged. First of all, he armed the people. Look at verse 13 of this chapter. He says, Therefore said I, in the lower places behind the wall and on the higher places, I even set the people after their families. That's a good strategy. And with their swords, with their spears, and with their bows. And so if there's an enemy, you need to be armed. To be forearmed is to be forearmed. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Nehemiah was a good leader. And he armed his people. And he gave him, them something to defend themselves that were there. That's what a preacher does. He arms his congregation. And he gives them something that they can hold on to when times are tough. And things are coming against them. And so he, give, he armed them. Secondly... Nehemiah assured his people. Look at verse 14. He says, I looked and rose up, and I said to the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord. I want you to see that. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters and your wives and your houses. And so... What he's saying here is, he aroused them. He said, I looked up and I rose up and I spoke up. Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, the Bible says, Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Are you tired this morning? Are you discouraged this morning? Are you afraid? Nehemiah said, Remember the Lord. He, he's a mighty God. He's a terrible God. He's bigger than any situation that you can find yourself in that's there. And so he's talking about here. There's no panic in heaven, only plans. Thirdly, Nehemiah aroused his people in verse 14b. He says on that passage of Scripture, he says, Fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses that's there. They were fighting for it. I'm telling you, the home is under attack in America. That's where the war is waging, is at the homes. And this world wants to get your children and to indoctrinate your children. And we need to stand for our children and our homes that we have in America. And having done all, we need to, to stand. And so he's saying here about these walls that will be up for protection. And there's walls that we need to have around ours. Our, our homes, our wives, and our children's, and to protect them. Then Nehemiah applied his people in verse 15. It says, And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we return all of us to the wall, everyone to his work. And so God has assigned us, all of us, a place on the wall that we are, are to be involved in and to work. And so don't wait for a feeling. Just step out in faith. What they were doing was they were battling and they were building. 
They didn't stop the building to battle. And so there was a combination that was there. The building was to go on. But they had to have their weapons with them. In case of the enemy, an opposition would come against them. And then, number five, Nehemiah assembled his people. We see that in verse 19 and 20, and I'm moving along. There's no substitute for public assembly. Nehemiah said, we're spread out on this wall. When you hear the trumpet sound, you're to come together. We come together this morning for information. We come together as God's people, and as we do, we are informed, if you will. So we come for information. We come for ins inspiration. We need to be inspired. We're hearing what the world has to say, and we're seeing what all the commentators have to say, but we want to hear what God has to say. What's God saying to us through His Word? We need to be inspired and be in tune to what God is saying. This is what's going through in our country in our lives isn't didn't take God by surprise. I'm telling you, he's still on the throne, isn't he? He's no panic in heaven, only plans. And so he assembled his people. So it was information, inspiration, and exhortation. That word exhortation means to encourage. I need encouragement and you need encouragement. And I'm telling you, you can't find a better place to be encouraged than in the house of God and with the people of God. And there, as they give you a word of encouragement just by their presence, and somebody says, I'm praying for you, what you're going through in your life, I'm telling you the world can't give that to you. When you come to the house of God, you come for ins inspiration and for information, and also you come uh, for the house of God for exhortation. I heard about a <clears throat> fellow courting his girl this way. That kid was back a long time, didn't it? Courting his girl. And so he wrote her a letter for two years. Every day. Put that thing in the post office. Well, she married up marrying the mailman. <laughs> 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 That's something to be said about the personal touch. <laughs> we need one another. We need to encourage one another. And we do that in a personal way. And we do that when we assemble and when we come together. Thirdly, I mean lastly, <laughs> amen. Nehemiah admonished his people in verse 21 through 23. And then we close. He says, and we labored in the work. And listen to this. Half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, Said I unto the people, let every one of his servant lodge within Jerusalem that is in the night. They may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saying that everyone put off for washing. Save that everyone put off for washing. I'm telling these folks are working. And the only reason they pulled the clothes off was to wash them where they get a little sm different smell. Uh, that was there. So what do we gain from this today? Nehemiah said, don't let up. That's what he said. Get in your place on the wall. Don't let nothing pull you away from it. And you be involved in the work of God. And don't give up. Don't shut up. Amen? You need to speak out. And you need to, need to speak up. Until you're called up. And bless God one of these days. Our battles down here is going to be over. God's coming to get us, and we're going to that place God has prepared for us. Amen and amen. Now, in closing, it takes a step of faith to come to Jesus and receive him as your Lord and as your Savior. When God saved me, it took a step of faith on my part to take that step and come to him and receive Jesus as my Savior and as my Lord. The same way it'll take a step of faith for you to say to the Lord, I want to be in my place, in my assignment that you have for me on that wall. I know you got an assignment. I know you got a place. I want to feel that place. I'm not listening for a voice. I'm not waiting for a feeling. I'm going to take a step of faith. And I'm going to volunteer my service to you I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to be committed to you. And I'm going to be there. And I'm going to do what I can in the building up of God's kingdom here in this place. 
and upon this earth. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you this morning for Nehemiah, the great wall builder. And Heavenly Father, as we spoke this morning on discouragement, Lord, there are a lot of God's people today that are discouraged. And the reason they're discouraged is because the devil has opened up his toolbox. And he's ensnared them and he's trapped them. And that's the reason they're discouraged is because of the devil. But God, you're the great encourager. And God, from time to time, we can get down as your people. But Lord, you can raise us up. Lord, you can encourage us. So Lord, I pray this morning that you will encourage the people that are here. And Lord, I pray this, this word has found a place in our hearts and our lives. And Lord, if there's somebody here this morning that's never took a step of faith to receive you as their Savior and Lord, I pray they'd come this morning and would do that. And if there's some that need to come and, and to fill their place on the wall and to build on their section, I pray they'd come this morning. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We're standing. We're praying. You be coming. When I survey the Oh.